welcome you all student students uh, in this video i'll be discussing about mutation in case of yeast neurospora drosophila and the human beings so i'll be curtailing myself only to yeast and neurospora in this video so <clears throat> why yeast or neurospora what is their significance in case of genetic studies what makes them so special to use them as mutational models in case of uh, mutational models so that is the main and most important question we have to know when we think about mutations in case of yeast and neurospora so when why yeast okay because it can mutate okay it can mutate mutate with regard to the nuclear material and also with regard to the mitochondrial material so any mutations can be analyzed very easily in either the yeast or in case of or in case of neurospora that is the reason why we use yeast and neurospora and most importantly as you people would have observed okay uh, observed in case of yeast uh, in this diagram you can see in case of yeast there is the formation of there is the formation of spores and these spores once they undergo meiosis they will arrange one above the other in a linear order after meiosis in case of yeast or neurospora because of this reason the scientist will be having an option okay so like this one above the other the spores will be arranged after meiosis uh, so meiosis means there is crossing over so once crossing over hackers they will get arranged they get duplicated and arranged so because of that reason what will happen we will be able to we will be able to break each of these spores separately and observe what changes would have up occurred in each of those spore each spore can be retrieved and they can be cultured and in the culture they can be observed what changes as they have incurred during the time of meiosis or before meiosis okay before meiosis means there is replication and be, why before replication there is formation of nucleotide components and these nucleotide components will be affected by the environmental conditions or they may be affected by the recombinant events which would be taking place during the time of meiosis so all these changes can be easily observed in the new in the tetrad spores which are arranged one above the other in the yeast or in the neurospora that is the reason why yeast and neurospora is used as a model organism in genetic studies okay so all of you got this and these two have two have provided the scientist with many different types of mutage mutant type many different mutant types which can be easily grown cultured and observed in the laboratory okay so before that we have to screen the mutants in case if we want to use this yeast or neurospora in the lab in the lab we have to screen the mutants so there are two types of mutants in case of these organisms one is the nuclear mutants and other one is the mitochondrial mutants so nuclear mutants are divided into oxotropes and with their with their counterparts that is the phototropes we know very clearly what do you mean by autotropes and phototropes oxotropes are the one which can which cannot prepare the necessary uh, amino acids or necessary ingredients what they require for their survival and whereas phototropes generally they have the genes for that so we have to identify this oxotropes and muta and phototropes and we have to cross them with each other okay to find the inheritance pattern with regard to the nuclear material or with respect to the mitochondrial material so before that we have one more option with this yeast and neurospora is we ourselves can prepare the oxotropes or the phototropes okay by either radiating them or giving them mutagenic compounds so like this we can make them oxotropic or oxotropic or phototropic in nature in the last video we have observed with respect to aims test in case of bacteria the same can be applied even in case of 
the yeast or the neurospora is it clear so that is the reason why yeast or neurospora is used for genetic studies is it clear okay next so the best example which has been studied in case of neurospora is the poke inheritance the poke inheritance which was studied by mitchell and herschel okay so in the bread mold they discovered that there is a type of mutant mutation or mutants which will be a uh, one sided in nature in inheritance pattern that is if the mother has the mutation that will be transferred to all if not they won't okay so the growth is unassociated with the mitochondrial impaired function where the uh, the inheritance is makes the organisms to grow slow and these are called as poke inheritance why because they lack the uh, they lack the cytochrome oxidase enzymes which are necessary for aerobic respiration which leads to the synthesis of the atps is it clear so these strains were named as poke in case of neurospora the results suggest that the wild type and poke strain suggest that it is maternally inherited means if the mother has if the mutation mutant is from the mother only then it is transferred into the next um, generations is it clear so this is the see here it is poke what is happening the poke is getting transferred to all the offsprings in the opposite when it is the normal okay and if the poke is the is a main you can you know in case of uh, yeast there is one more important uh, genomic programming we have to know that is the mating type in yeast so they change their mating type plus and minus plus and minus so the plus will always provide and the minus will always receive so if we take this this is plus then definitely this will be the provider and this will be the recipient so all will become plus is that clear in the opposite if this is minus okay if this is minus and if this is the if the mating type if the male is the minus okay then what will happen even in that case the mother's egg is the one which is providing all the components necessary so hence most of them will be minus okay so this shows very clearly that the maternal maternal presence is more important that is what because of the presence of the mitochondria is it clear so we know this uh, this is about the poke inheritance in case of neurospora the same type of example is also observed in case of chlamydomonas which was observed by rut sager in 1954 and confirms a g a specific gene for streptomycin resistance okay so here also we can see the mating time in case of yeast so where the streptomycin str plus in chlamydomonas was reported rut sager so here you can see there is again two mating types mt plus and mt minus make equal cytoplasmic contribution to the zygote determine that str phenotype is transmitted only through mt plus parent of course we know very clearly when the positive is there only that can give the component the reciprocal cross between sensitive and strain resistant yielded different results depending on the genotype of mt plus parent which is expressed in all the offsprings <coughs> okay mt plus parents in all the offsprings so as shown the figure one half of the offsprings mt plus and one half the mt minus indicate that mating is controlled by nuclear gene that segregates in the mendelian fashion so here the dominant and recessiveness comes into effect so we learn two types of in a, two types of characters which are influenced by the nucleus one character is influenced by the nucleus and the other character in k other character is the mitochondria poke inheritance and the streptomycin resistance which is the nuclear inheritance so two examples we have to note the next is the petite inheritance in case of yeast 
So petite yeast, so here it's very important to note that these yeasts are unable to grow on a medium containing non-fermentable carbon sources such as glycerol or ethanol and form small colonies when grown in the presence of fermentable carbon sources such as the glucose. Next, this petite phenotype can be caused by the absence of, by the absence of or absence of mitochondria or the mutations in mitochondria okay which are which are in or with the nuclear genes which are involved in the oxidative phosphorylation these which is specific to mitochondria are termed as cytoplasmic peptides and the one which is encoded the nuclear sometimes okay they are also peptide in nature and these peptides are characterized by the mutations in the cytochrome oxidase A, A3 and B complexes. They fail to produce the respiratory enzymes necessary for the respiratory chain pathway. Okay. It's capable of growing on media containing only non-fermentable carbon sources. Peptide is only capable of growing on non-fermentable components like the glycerol or ethanol and forming small colonies when grown on the presence of fermentable carbon components like the glucose okay so the absence of mitochondria can cause the petite phenotype or by deletion of mutations as we know very clearly next is this inheritance pattern is divided into three types one is segregational petites mutants are created by nuclear mutations and exhibit the mendelian segregation pattern that is one is to one segregation when we do the when we do the cross we get that one is to one segregation Whereas in case of neutral petites, when crossed wild type, all offsprings are wild type, it is inherited normal mitochondrial DNA from wild type parent, which is replicating in the offsprings. Normal mitochondrial DNA from the wild type parent. Okay, whereas separate tissue, wild type, all offsprings are petites showing dominant behavior to suppress the wild type mitochondrial function. So there are three types of segregational petites, um, mutants. One is segregational petite, then neutral petites and the suppressive petites. Okay, here we have to note that petite and wild type. Between petite and wild type, all offsprings are petite. Petite and wild type, all offsprings are petite. Means this petite is suppressing the effect of wild type. Got it? Whereas here, the neutral type, when crossed to wild type, all offsprings are wild type. All offsprings are wild type means petite do not have any role to play when there is normal mitochondrial presence. Segregational, it is the normal Mendelian type where it is one is to one segregation. Is it clear? Okay. So these are the type you can see very clearly how they cross with each other and how they result in formation of petites and as the petite colonies increases they become more deficient in producing the enzymes necessary for the mitochondrial pathway or you can say the respiratory chain pathway is it okay okay so this ends up the mutations in case of yeast neurospora okay yeast and neurospora very importantly remember a question can be asked, write a note on mutation in yeast or neurospora with and add a note on their inheritance pattern. Very important on their inheritance pattern with respect to the petite inheritance, specifically with respect to the petite inheritance. So what we have to do? First, we have to introduce what why yeast and neurospora is important in genetic studies. So what we will write? We will write about their, uh, their specialization in formation of formation and arrangement of the spores. So remember, yeast and neurospora, after meiosis, they undergo duplication and all the duplicated cells will be arranged one above the other seriously. Each of the spores can be cut down and they can be inoculated and absorbed for their growth and development each spore so hence all the meiotic product can be easily observed in the in the 
subsequent uh, laboratory procedure or you can say subsequent process that is the reason why they are very important in genetic studies next is once we define this or note this then we have to write the type of mutations which are present in case of these organisms the nuclear mutations and the mitochondrial mutations so the mitochondrial mutations in case of neurospora is poke and the nuclear mutations very simple the oxotropes and the ototropes with respect to amino acids with respect to yeast it is the peptide inheritance and the type of their segregation we know very clearly the different types of segregation okay segregational mm, uh, suppressive and the other one is neutral in case of peptide inheritance and their effect okay so you can write about when we if we are able to write all this then it means that we have understood the mutations in case of yeast and neurospora is it clear okay thank you all